Hello everybody, I'm Roy McCoy, and in this video I am reviewing the third game in a series that until this point in my life had completely passed me by. Rock of Ages 3. Make and Break. Before we get started, don't forget to throw me a like and also subscribe if you enjoy my content, because your support means a hell of a lot to me. Okay, so, Rock of Ages. When I was first given the opportunity to review this, I got it a little bit confused. I thought, oh, Rock of Ages, that's that film starring Jack Black. And then I remembered, no, wait a minute, that's School of Rock. And then I found out there was a film called Rock of Ages, and then I realised it had nothing to do with this game. If you head to the developer's website, they describe it as a competitive tower defence and arcade action rolled up with some kind of Monty Python-esque humour. Now, at this point, warning bells were ringing because I was like, anybody that tries to call themselves Monty Python-esque is going to fail. However, I have to say that I was wrong. More on my love of their Monty Python-esque humour soon. In fact, I was pleasantly surprised across the board, and now having put a considerable amount of hours into this game, I can safely say that simply passing this off as a tower defence game does not do this great little title any kind of justice. It has elements of racing, it has an arcade vibe, it has a competitive vibe, yes there's tower defence, but there's also a vibe that kind of harks back to Marble Madness if you remember that game. It's basically when you roll a ball down a hill. In a nutshell, you take on a variety of different historical characters like Julius Caesar, you see Napoleon, there's even William Tell or William Tell Jr. in there, and maybe slightly less historically accurate, there is Moby Dick and Humpty Dumpty. And you take on these characters in a variety of different game modes, most of which rely on you rolling a ball down a hill, getting through what apparently seems to be an obstacle course, and smashing into your opponent's gates or some gates of a castle before your opponent does. Sound confusing? Well, it's bloody brilliant. That's what it is. At the title screen, the make or break options become quite apparent what it is. So at the moment, I'm going to focus on break because that has both the multiplayer and the main campaign. Yes, this game even has a multiplayer option. Sadly, at the time of making this review, I couldn't find anybody online to play against. It was the saddest moment. However, having experienced the main campaign and seeing what it's capable of, I get a vibe that this could have sort of element of the fun that's involved in golf with your friends. However, I need to say I don't think it's going to be as good as Golf With Your Friends, but I will link it in the comments below so you can check out the review of that game if you are looking for some multiplayer madness. So, as I mentioned, in the story mode you are navigating through various times in history, and to do that you basically control a ship on a map and you move around it and you choose which battle you're going to hit next. You can see it in this screenshot here. And the more battles you win, or the more of these matches you win, the more points you get, and the more sort of other stages and other epochs in history you can open up. So there is an element of progression in this game, and also something that I liked is some points will help you open up new tools that you can use during your matches. So when you first hit the tutorial, it goes a little bit like this. The first time you learn how to roll a ball down a hill, and you have to dodge a variety of different obstacles uh, to get to the end and smash through the gates. The next thing you have to do is deploy the obstacles to stop the balls rolling down the hill and smashing through your gates. Why is this important? Because this is the crux of the game. In the story mode, you are taking on a variety of different AI characters, and rather than being some kind of paceless tower defense game, this is high octane, and that's what I really loved about it. You start off decorating the opponent's course with a variety of different obstacles, which are really, really fun. There's things like cannons, there's things like catapults, there's like a huge ball that stamps on the ground, and then your opponent's boulder gets stuck, and you can hit it with your catapults. There's also some cows that stick to your opponent's boulders, and there's like these kind of falls that splat on the screen. I really enjoyed it. It was really Monty Python-esque. So while you're littering the course with these kind of obstacles, some people at the bottom of your screen are chiseling away at the ball, creating the boulder. Now, as previously mentioned, the more points you get, the more kind of obstacles you can unlock. And actually, before these matches, and there are a variety of different matches, you can choose which boulder you're going to use and also which obstacles. Now, the boulder choice is important because some are faster, some are harder, some have more durability, some will do more damage. So there is a kind of tactical choice to it as well. 
So back to the matches. As soon as you've basically deployed all the obstacles, your ball is ready to roll, and you roll your ball down at the same time that your opponent is rolling their ball down, and you're dodging their obstacles while they're dodging yours, all trying to get into there, and not fall off, by the way, not fall off these crazy tracks, all a bit like Marble Madness, and roll it all the way to the end, not trying to get destroyed. You don't want your boulder to be destroyed and smash into their gates and do damage. And the one that does the most damage wins the match. That is the simple idea of these matches. Now, that isn't the only mode on offer. There's also racing where you can race against your opponent. And if they pick a faster ball, you may be at a disadvantage. There's also a time trial mode where your boulder is actually a bomb and you've got to get to the end before it blows up. And there's also something called the Humpty Dumpty mode, which is undoubtedly one of the most frustrating modes, in a good way, where I wanted to rage quit because you take control of an egg-like Humpty Dumpty thing that you have to not smash. It is really infuriating, but really good fun, but really, really infuriating. So beware destroying your controllers. So that's effectively what the game is, a competitive, tower defense, arcade, Marble Madness inspired game. And with the multiplayer option and the single player option, there is a lot of game to be had here. Now let's talk about the look and the feel of the game, and let's talk about that Monty Python-esque humour. When I read that, when I saw that, I panicked. However, the graphics are in-game stunning. I really enjoy them. I think they're perfectly suited for this kind of game. I really enjoyed them. I think it looks great. <laughs> I think it's really enjoyable. It's got this kind of, well, Monty Python-esque look about it. But the cutscenes is where it really comes alive. These things are ripped out of something like The Meaning of Life. They are the artwork that is in the Monty Python. There's all this kind of like really... The humour is there, but I think it's the artwork that is the most similar. And I have to say, I really enjoyed it. And for example, the sounds, the feel, the, the way they spoke was just bloody brilliant. I really thoroughly enjoyed this game, and I highly recommend it to anybody that kind of wants to play a multiplayer game or have a bit of sort of puzzle fun or enjoy something like Marble Madness. So we've picked up on the multiplayer that sadly I couldn't try. We've picked up on the main storyline. We've also picked up on the graphics and the look and the feel of the game. But I have to mention there is one other element, and that is the make section. So at the start... On your title screen, it gives you the make and break option. The break is the story, and make is a course creation mode. I had a go at this, and basically Napoleon Bonaparte leads you through how to create a decent course. This element of the game effectively gives it a large amount of unlimited content, if you like. The limit is your imagination! I really hate saying something like that. But effectively, there is a lot more. So... Take into account there is a good story mode with entertaining cutscenes and really good fun to be had. There is a multiplayer mode. There is a local co-op, a two-player split-screen mode. There is also a course creation mode. What more could you want? This game is really good fun. Now, all in all, I'm going to have to sum this up and I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. I was going to go for 7.5, but I thought, no, do you know what? I'll be generous and give it an 8. I had bags of fun in this game. I didn't expect anything from this game. Hell, I thought it was related to that the film that wasn't even related to the film. I thought it was School of Rock and then I thought it was Rock of Ages. I had no idea what I was getting here, but I have to say I was really impressed and I really enjoyed myself on this. The look, the feel, the fun factor, the rage quitting on Humpty Dumpty, God I hate Humpty Dumpty, all led to me having a lot of fun and a little bit of rage. And I highly recommend this game to anybody that likes that Marble Madness vibe. So, 8 out of 10. And from that, this is me, Roy McCoy, out.